So here's some of my favourite lower body unilateral strength training exercises. Often I might use and prioritise over maybe a bilateral exercise for lower body, such as a squat or a deadlift. Um, for golfers, uh, early on in the programme, especially if they have maybe some hip mobility issues that stops them getting into a good squat or a good deadlift position. Um, so possibly a little bit safer, not saying the squat deadlift are uh, <coughs> unsafe, it's uh, all down to context. Uh, and also down to the context is what they're working on in the golf swing, okay? So possibly they're uh, moving laterally too much sort of sway slide, so maybe something more uh, working on stability in the frontal plane uh, could, could help with that, okay? Also great for working with glutes, glute medius as well, and just balance coordination compared to a, a bilateral uh, stance. So first off, one of my favourites is a split squat. So from the front side, okay, everything wants to be nice and aligned, okay, toes pointing forward, front and back foot, okay, knees drop down, uh, pointing over the little toes, okay, not dropping it in or out excessively, uh, not tipping the pelvis one way or the other or leaning one way or the other, okay. Uh, knee down to a couple of inches from the floor, then extend both legs uh, from there. Okay, from the side view, we want a relatively vertical shin at the bottom uh, of our split squat position. Knee a couple of inches from the floor, okay, and then back up. Always staying on the toes of the back foot, not rocking backwards and forwards uh, onto the heel. Uh, and also then, also not leaning forwards or backwards, staying nice and tall with the, uh, with the back. Uh, just moving up and down in space from here, okay, making sure the shoulders are back. Uh, and we're nice and straight, good sparring posture from there. Okay, so basic technique. You can load it up with dumbbells or a barbell. <coughs> so, with dumbbells by the sides, also great for grip strength as well, holding on to dumbbells uh, if, you, if you're training this for strength. Um, so, nice tall posture, everything in line, down to a couple of inches from the floor, and then back up nice and tall. Okay, so you can use dumbbells. You can slightly tweak the exercise to maybe target uh, more quad dominant, more glute, do glute dominant. So if you almost got into like a golf posture and then take a step backwards, we're almost slightly leaning forwards from the hips, okay, not from the back. And then uh, perform your split squat from here. You're really loading up the glute, maybe a little more sort of posterior chain uh, from here compared to staying nice and tall, okay. You can use a barbell as well, <coughs> which changes things a little bit as well. So it changes where the weight is. Front squat position, or front rack position, sorry, from here. Great for the upper back, okay? If you can get into this uh, position, if you have the mobility in the shoulders, okay? Or back squat position, okay, from here. Uh, <coughs> and a little bit easier than maybe getting into a full back squat in terms of maybe hip mobility. However, it obviously does require some hip mobility uh, down the front side here and the back side of this forward leg. More challenging would be the rear foot elevated split squat. So back toes or back laces up onto a bench uh, or whatever you have something elevated. And then performing your split squat from there. Okay, so again, keeping the same sort of technique, nice and tall with the upper body. Vertical shin at the bottom, roughly. Okay, and knee down nice and low. Making sure we're working on full range and not just skimping uh, on this uh, top, top portion here. Okay, there's a split squat, a few different variations. Again, you can lean slightly forwards as long as it's from the hips with this rear foot elevated split squat, maybe to target a bit more of the posterior chain. Um, really love the exercise for that stability in the frontal plane. A lot of people seem to have <laughs> balance issues as well with this, so good for balance, stability, strength in the lower body, front, back, side of the legs, really targeting the whole area, also grip strength. So next up is the lunge. I often uh, prefer to use the backwards lunge first before the forwards lunge, okay? I think it's a little bit easier on the knees. Um, so backwards lunge, nice tall starting position, feet about sort of hip width apart, hip to shoulder width apart, okay? We're gonna take a big step backwards, just onto the toes, then put the heel down, drop the knee down, and then stand back nice and tall. Exactly the same sort of uh, postures as the split squat that we just did. So big step backwards, vertical shin, nice tall posture uh, with the other body, then stepping back up, Okay, making sure we step back to about, yeah, we don't have to step back with our feet together and be a little bit wobbly, but we can step back together, uh, hip width apart uh, with our feet to make sure we've got that stability when we step back up, especially if we've got dumbbells or if we're using a barbell. Um, loading wise, exactly the same as the, uh, as the split squat, so we can either hold dumbbells in our hands, 
uh, and stay nice and tall and make it sort of more quad dominant. We can almost get into a golf type posture and load up the posterior chain a little bit more uh, from here. We can use the barbell front rack position or back uh, sort of on, onto your back, onto your trap, um, depending on your shoulder mobility. Okay, there. Um, usually I recommend dumbbells to begin with. And uh, in the front, front uh, lunge, forward lunge, exactly the same. Big step forwards, okay, onto your back toe, drop the knee down a couple of inches from the floor, again, vertical chin at the front, um, pressing it back up, okay. Step forwards, down, pressing back up. You can split it up into a sort of step, down, up, and step, okay, if you're new to these, and similar with the uh, backwards lunge. Step, down, up, and then step if you need to, to begin with. Uh, if you have maybe tro trouble with balance or coordination with the exercise. So next, a uh, single leg deadlift. So again, you can use dumbbells or a barbell with this one. Again, usually third dumbbells. Uh, so single leg deadlift being uh, onto one leg, hinging at the hips, okay. Dumbbells down in front if you're holding the dumbbells and then stand up nice and tall at the top uh, position here. So it's a good hip hinge and move pattern. Uh, key things are that you don't roll outwards, okay. So you want to watch this back foot okay uh, and it's not turning outwards okay it's staying down towards the ground and you haven't uh, turned here so everything in line nice shape back posture good hip hinge movement so usually then dumbbells in hand onto one leg hinging down a little bend in the knee and standing up nice and tall okay so if you haven't done that before do it without weight uh, and then grab some dumbbells and then you can load it up once you've uh, managed to do the hip hinge, keep everything nice and in line, not turned out, nice straight back posture, okay, from there, um, single leg deadlift. So next up is uh, step ups, and the step ups and the step ups, now, <coughs> often I think people uh, do this a little bit wrong, and I'll show you from the bench here, <coughs> so often you see people just do this, um, you know, and this is all I'm doing is springing from the back toe, and, uh, and springing up, okay. Which kind of repeats the object a little bit of these step ups. Okay, I want to be pulling from the front leg and not springing from the back leg. Okay, so I want to be training this leg, pulling myself up, and then lowering myself back down with control. Okay, uh, and not springing using the back toes to spring up. If you find yourself doing this, you can curl your toes up, and this can stop you from springing up uh, from there. Okay, um, <coughs> if you're standing nice and close, okay, a bit more quad dominant exercise. If you stand with your foot a little bit far away to begin with. Uh, maybe a little bit slight hip hinge forwards, we're maybe loading up the glutes, loading up the posterior chain a little bit more. Um, again, usually I'd recommend dumbbells. Something <coughs> bad knee height or slightly below to begin with. Um, don't go for a too higher step, too tall a step to begin with, especially if you're one of those that uh, just springs off the back foot. So make sure we're using this uh, front leg to pull ourselves up. Okay, and lower ourselves back down, not just drop down, um, under control. So you'll find that this is probably a little bit harder than what you're used to if you're doing the wrong type of step ups. Um, so give these a go, really good exercise uh, for the quads and the glutes. Okay, so next up, uh, single leg squat. Okay, so all you do is stand on one leg and then squat down, touch our knees to the mat, and stand it back up. Okay, arms out in front, there's like a counterbalance. And you can hold a light kettlebell or dumbbell out in front as well if you're having trouble with can sometimes help you get a little bit lower, uh, keeping good form. So the target is uh, knee towards the ground and then back up. What you want to watch out for is that the this knee doesn't dive inwards, the foot doesn't roll in, okay, it stays nice and stable. But you might sit shaking around to begin with, but we want to keep it nice and stable. Upper body stable too, not leaning uh, anyway. Also a nice straight back posture if we're looking from, uh, from the side. So we're keeping nice and tall from here, okay? Not rounding over, okay, at all. Or uh, flexing the lower back from there. So, good one for balance, stability, um, single leg loading, just like in the goal. So we're gonna do a, a glute bridge or a hip thrust. So kind of a low level exercise to begin with, single leg glute bridge, which you can load up um, if you wish. So I'll only show you one without loading up. So, hands across the chest, okay, feet together to begin with, one leg into the air, hips up as high as you can, okay, bum squeeze at the top, really working this side, bum, okay, I don't want to see sort of drop, hips dropping either side, okay, or overextending the back, okay, really just 
pressing up through the hips, <coughs> especially compared to maybe a Pilates type bridge where uh, where you're sort of rolling up and getting into a uh, sort of a hip flex uh, hip flexion, a sort of spinal flexion movement to extend uh, extend upwards. We really want to be working on that hip extension movement, the hip extension strength uh, during this movement pattern, or at least that's what I want people to be doing. Uh, hip extension, okay, rather than a sort of spinal flexion, spinal roll uh, to get up. So hip, hip extension, bridging up, bum squeeze, back down, okay, and repeat. Um, so many different variations you can do. You just want to watch out that you're not twisting from the hips, okay, and we're getting our hips as far as we can into that uh, extension. Similarly, uh, we've got a hip thrust, so from the bench this time, the same concept, okay, so starting from a nice tabletop position at the top, we'll have one leg out, okay, we're going to drop our hips down just above the floor, then drive our hips nice and high, uh, to begin with, you can keep your leg nice and straight, you can bring it in if you need to, uh, hips nice and high, bum squeeze at the top, okay, making sure it's a nice sort of tabletop uh, finished position at the top, uh, here again, working on that hip extension, uh, and glutes. So of course we can use these unilateral lower body exercises for power too. So here's a few examples for you. So split squat jumps, okay? Just like if you're doing a squat jump, you want to jump as high as we can during each jump. Same with these split squat jumps, okay? Down, jump up as high as you can, back down. Okay, we're not just swapping our feet over and down like this, okay? We're really trying to create some power from the ground, okay? We can do a rear for elevated split squat jump as well. So, back tail on, and we're just going to be jumping with this front leg. So, rear for elevated split squat jump. So, next up, we can do some single leg jumps or single leg hops or bounds. Uh, we're sticking this sort of sagittal plane uh, for now. So, a single leg jump landing in a squat. Okay, single leg jump landing in a same leg, and then single leg, then on the other leg. A few options for you. Uh, to begin with, maybe uh, this one. Okay, single leg jump land into a squat position, a little bit easier, then progressing on to land on one leg, etc. Uh, from there. So these single leg unilateral lower body exercises, great for goal, great for working the quads, the glutes, glute medius, okay, especially in this sort of frontal plane stability. Uh, great for that sort of single leg loading, really pressing off, working our trail side, but also stability on this uh, lead side as well. Okay, general lower body strength, also power as I've shown you. Um, great different variations, great for grip strength, great for posture, um, less uh, spine loading, um, so possibly a little bit safer for people that maybe haven't done too much training with squats before. Especially if you have some uh, hip mobility issues or you have trouble getting into a front rack position or a sort of back squat position as well with a barbell. Um, great, though it may be safer to go heavy to begin with and that's why I often prioritise these uh, into a training programme. Also depending on context, um, training history, what uh, they're working on, okay, specific to their goal swing as well. Okay, so uh, give these a go next time you're in the gym.